So the story starts, if you guys didn't know, I worked at a kids inflatable place probably three to four years ago. And the kids inflatable place, I had a lot of people my age working with me, except for this one guy who worked there in the same position as us, who was about 40 to 45 years old. We'll call him Josh for this video because I don't want to say his actual name. Josh was a very quiet guy, so I didn't get to know him that well. But when I did talk to him, I did find out that he moved from Florida a few months ago up to Virginia, where we were at now. I didn't ask him how he got the job because I didn't want to be mean or anything that he's working with a bunch of high schoolers. But one day in the break room, he told me something that I will never forget. So he had this girlfriend back in Florida. I don't remember her name. We'll just call her Anna for the purpose of the story. He said him and Anna were having one of their stay at home date nights. And during that date night, Josh had a girl who was a mutual friend text him multiple times during that date. It gets back. Part two. In regards to everyone saying this is fake, this is me two years ago working there, proof that I did work there, and this is three days before the incident happened, so let's get into it. Okay, so basically where we left off, Josh, my coworker, was texting another girl with his girlfriend there on the couch, and Josh's girlfriend looks over his shoulder and sees him texting another girl on the couch as they're watching a movie. Now Josh's girlfriend is asking a ton of questions on who this girl is and worried that she is getting cheated on. But Josh told his girlfriend that it was someone texting him, inquiring about something he put on, I believe, Craigslist. This is when things get weird. Josh's mom then comes downstairs and brings some snacks or whatever. And immediately as his mom comes downstairs, his girlfriend goes upstairs to go to bed. Hour goes by and Josh hears the phone ring. And this is weird because it's 1 a.m. Then he hears a knock on the door. Part three. Okay, so let's get back to where he left off. My coworker Josh's girlfriend confronts him about texting out a girl. And he claims that it was just a girl from Craigslist. But she does not believe him a single bit and storms upstairs in complete anger. And then he hears a knock on his door. And keep in mind, it's 1 a.m. and him, his mom, and his girlfriend are the only ones home. So instead of opening the door, he looks at the people and just sees a middle-aged man. So Josh is trying to talk to this dude to the people, asking why he's at his front door at 1 a.m. This is when things get weird. So this guy claims he's the DoorDash delivery driver and then he has a drop off that he needs to bring inside because it's big. Josh is like, yeah, I didn't order DoorDash. You probably have the wrong house. Then the guy just says, no, let me in. Now his girlfriend's down. You guys, I have a rash on my neck and I need somebody's advice because I'm freaking out. And I don't know if it's a rash, if it's I've been bit by a bug, if a vampire bit me in my sleep. I don't really know. I don't really know. So I'm gonna tell you a little backstory of like how I got it. But first guys, you need this cordless hair curler. Like I'm just saying, the curls come out beautiful. And I'm not gonna lie, I had to go over the curls like one or two times just to, like because I never used this before. So I had to like see, you know, what worked or whatever. But the link is in my bio, just so you know. Anyway, back to this mystery rash growth whatever you want to call it on my neck so a couple of days ago okay i'm not trying to throw my friend under the bus or anything because like i don't think she has like roaches or like bed bugs or anything but like at the same time like you never know i don't know but i slept at her house for like three days in a row and i initially thought that i went to bed itching because you know she has a dog and it sheds which honestly could be the case like i said i don't know i need your guys help and advice because i have no idea what this possibly could be so then the last night that i slept there i had a dream that i got bit by a giant mosquito on my neck and in my dream, I went into my dad's toolbox, took out sandpaper, and just started itching my neck. I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> so moral of the story, I literally was itching my neck in my sleep while I was asleep and woke up itching my neck still. Not only my neck, but my thumb. Yes, my thumb. And like, I don't know about you, but anytime I've ever gotten a bug bite on my finger, like it just never, I never feel satisfied itching it. I try to bite it too, but like it still is just not satisfying. The only thing that I've ever been able to like find that actually itches a mosquito bite or bug bite on my thumb is the, the lid to a water bottle, like the cap, like you know the rough part? Like that's the only thing I've ever been able to find like that actually works when I'm trying to itch something on my thumb. But anyway, that's irrelevant. So anyway, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention um that hickey on my neck is not the bug bite <laughs> in this video like you can't see it because it already like kind of went away but yeah i probably should have like mentioned that because this whole time you probably thought that that was the bug bite but it's not but yeah anyway so i told my dad and then he called the exterminators the exterminators ended up saying that we had carpet beetles and so they sprayed the entire house and they told us that we would find like corpses of bugs never found any corpses at all so i feel like they were just pretending that we had car carpet beetles just to charge us to spray the whole house but anyway yeah Link in bio for the curling iron. When my daughter was born, she had dark skin and looked like her parents could be of African descent. My husband was furious and accused me of cheating and left right then and there. He told everyone on both sides of the family what happened and wanted a divorce. Then his friends and families all called me to see how upset they were and called me really nasty names. My mother was by my side the entire time as I kept professing my innocence. He refused to pick me up from the hospital, threw myself out on the lawn, and changed the locks. When my sister called to get the baby stuff, he texted her a picture of a bare nursery room and said he got rid of everything. He even destroyed my art studio. 
Eventually, he agreed to do a paternity test, and he was 100% the father. No one could believe this, so he did it again, and he was the dad. One of his cousins did the ancestry thing and found out there was 30% of African in their family. This made Jim's paternal great-grandmother admit to having an affair on the same time Jim's grandfather was born, and because he could pass as hers, she just assumed her husband was the father. Since then, he's been reaching out and everyone has come to apologize. I told him I needed time, and he asked to see the baby, and I let him, but I'm too afraid to physically hand her to him. I've never cheated and have been 100% innocent all this time. Am I the asshole for not wanting to give him a second chance? So this one time I had to stay at my grandma's because my dad was on vacation. And I was having a huge box of clothes come in and I was not about to have these hoes stolen so I had my friend stop by to put them inside. So I called my friend up and I was like, hey, can you tell me when you get to my house and let me know when you put the package in? She's like, I got you, shawty. I was like, bad girl. So around 10 minutes later, I got a call from her freaking out. She was like, Kayla, is there anybody at your house? I was like, no, my dad's on vacation and I'm at my grandma's. She said, no, Kayla, there is somebody at your house right now. So I started freaking out. I'm like, girl, what do you mean? And she said she saw someone walk across this huge window and then my dad's lights turned on. So I start freaking out. I'm like, what did you see walk across the window? Like, who did it look like? And she said it was just a black tall figure that walked across that window. And around five minutes of being on the phone freaking out, she said my dad's lights turned off again. Eventually me and my grandma drove by the house to make sure nobody was there. And of course, nobody was in my house. And it only gets worse. Now, don't get me wrong, that looks like a very nice, nostalgic sort of uh, aesthetic that you can reflect back on your childhood about, but I worked at this place for two years and I sort of have a dark story to tell about it. Prerequisite, this is not including anyone that worked there or owned the store. I loved everyone that I worked with and what I did. This is a reference just to one unfortunate kind of dark experience I had. So me and my friend Andrew one day were working there at a shift and we were closing. It was around 8.30 p.m. And for those of you who don't know, we're the people that are doing the party, we're in the inflatables, we're doing all that stuff, playing with the kids. Okay, so another responsibility of Andrew and I is, is to greet the hostess, aka the mom of the birthday child. This is relevant because when we greeted the hostess at this last party, it was weird. Because she was running extremely late and was very like shaky and nervous when talking to us. It gets weirder. She had this request for us to write down this name but wouldn't let us know why. Part two. Part two to the time a serial killer pulled up to the kids inflatable place that I worked at at night alone. So where we left off in the last video of my page where the mom is very shaky and very nervous and acting super suspicious and tells us to write down this name but doesn't give us a reason why. Here is a Snapchat memory I have saved from that night. We gather all the kids for the intro where all the kids sit down on the carpet in the lobby and we go over the rules of them then they watch an introduction video. But this is when things start to pick up and get weird. I'm watching the video, waiting for the kids to finish so I can tell them the rest of the rules. And then Andrew taps me on the shoulder and he points to the mother, AKA the hostess from earlier. He says, why is she doing that? And I'm like, why is she doing what? And then I look over to what he's pointing at and she's just sitting by the trash can, looking left to right out the window, not paying attention to her kids at all. This is the second red flag from tonight and it's only been 15 minutes. I go along with my intro and I line the kids up to take them into the party room. But when the kids all go in, the mom stays in the lobby. This is part three in the story time when I was working there and went eye to eye with the serial killer. So in the last video, I was explaining that the mom was pacing back and forth, looking out the window, not paying attention to the kids. And then when me and Andrew, my coworker, uh, brought the kids into the kids inflatable room, the mom did not follow with them. She stayed in the lobby at the same exact spot she was standing at earlier. And this is where things go from kind of weird to horrifying. So 15 minutes into the party, the mom eventually does come in, but I greet the mom when she does come in to make sure everything's going smoothly and to her liking, and she just doesn't respond to me. She did not hear me. I blatantly said her name multiple times and she just wouldn't respond to me. The weirdest part about it wasn't that she wasn't responding. She had this stone cold look in her face like she just saw a ghost or something. After that, about five minutes later, my manager pulls me by the shirt and says, get in the lobby now. My manager had this worried tone in her voice as she asked me if I saw this man come into the party later. She asked if I got his name and then she told me what I did not want to. This is part four to the story time on when I went eye to eye with a real life serial killer. The most horrific experience I've ever been through. At the end, I'm gonna show you an actual video that I took when I went eye to eye with this guy. Let's pick up where we left off. My manager pulled me out of the room and I could tell that something was up based off her tone of voice and body language that something was seriously wrong. She said there was a man that came in from the outside and said uh, that he was here for the party or whatever, but he skipped the check-in and wouldn't give her an actual name. So we just assumed he wasn't on the guest list and he just went on his way in because he said he left something in the playroom. She told me he seemed very suspicious, so she wanted me and Andrew, who were working the party, to go check and see what was going on. If you 
don't know how this place is set up, there's two big playrooms. Uh, the kids go into the first room for 30 minutes, and then they go in the next room for 30 minutes. By this time, the kids were already moved to the second room, so it was just an empty playroom we were checking in. Then Andrew got my attention and told me there was a noise coming from inside the basketball inflatable. There's only one way, and this is the last part in the story time, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna be having a video that I took from this experience that still creeps me out to this day, so stay tuned to the end. Okay, so let's pick off to where we left off in the last video. When Andrew called me over to the kids' basketball inflatable and said he was hearing a noise from coming inside the inflatable. One thing I initially noticed when I walked over there, it's right by the back door. And the only people that can get in and out of this back door are employees with the key. So Andrew and I hear the noise again, and we look at each other. Is this guy inside the inflatable? There was only one way inside the inflatable and one way out. So we tear off the Velcro to get inside the inflatables and we like have a flashlight or whatever. And then we're looking around and we see absolutely nothing. And then we hear the noise while we're inside the inflatable. So, so we're freaking out. And then this happens. 